Hi, I'm Paul Brody and we're in my shop. I have a short story to tell you. Mitch hasn't even heard this story. It happened last week, so it's fresh. I needed to buy some metal, so I went to my local shop, Metal Mart. Everybody there knows me. I walk in the door and there's a loud voice over here. It says, who's Mitch? Well, that's what everybody wants to know. Who's Mitch? Well, I can tell you, Mitch is the man of mystery. And I think he likes it that way. He's behind the camera. You don't get to see him much at all. Thank you, Mitch. So we're on Aramaki's and I have three in my shop right now. So let's take a little look around. I got the race bike. I got the black one and I got the red one. So let's just have a little talk over here. It's basically the first Aramaki which I bought and there's a story, I found it. It was sitting in a shed and I got it for 50 bucks and a case of beer and it didn't look like this at all. Sold over here as a Harley Davidson, Harley Davidson Sprint. So I fixed it up, I restored it. It's a 1970 SS, it's a 350. This one here I built out of two bikes and this one is the North American version, so it has the small tank. It's got rubber mounted handlebars, which some people think are really strange. And when I was a kid, we always thought it was strange, these bikes, because the Kickstarter was on the wrong side, the brake was on the left, the shifter was on the back. There was a really small sprocket and the chain guard was mounted way up high. It was just a weird bike. And then a friend of mine's brother had one and I was riding with him on another bike and he went through some corners and I was amazed at how fast the bike went through the corners. So that's when my interest really got peaked. This is a 350 as well. I call this a 1965 and it's the European version because it's got the low bars. It's got the speedo inside the headlight, hump tank, hump seat. I really like this bike a lot. On the Sprint, you'll notice that the engines aren't looking exactly the same on the cylinder head. This one is known as the ashtray head because if you take off the rocker cover and flip it over, it's kind of like a huge ashtray. This engine here is known as the knucklehead for whatever reason, because it's got the lumps and the bumps of the rocker covers where the, where the rocker spindles go in. So those are the two different styles. In, in Europe, this one was known as the Ala Verde or Green Wing. And the race bike was known as the Aladoro, which means gold wing, which Honda took over as a, a, a touring bike forever. So, Ala Verde, Aladoro. This is my race bike I'm working on, and I've done a few things this week. So let me just update you. I've got the new mount on here. This is the mount for the number plate. I made the little hole down here for the headset. Got the front brake cable hooked up, so that's working quite nicely. I started working on the intake manifold. I've got uh, this tube here. I've made up the flange. I'm having a really hard time finding a carburetor. I've been looking for a long time, so I'm putting out to the viewers. I need a Spanish Amol 34 millimeter. Mitch is going to show you a photo so that there's no uncertainty. Thank you. I'm willing to buy, trade, talk, whatever. I drilled a hole. I put a big hole in here for lightness. These are the seat mounts. One, two, three, and the seat gets bonded on and fiberglass. I made a rear fender. I want to show you something. I was looking in the back and I found one piece of metal and it was the right size. So I started to make a rear fender and when I got it, it cut, I realized that this is, this is where the chain has to go. I rolled it the wrong way. So then I had to go to the metal shop again and buy another piece of aluminum. Anyway, this one's right because that's where the chain goes. So this one was on the wrong side. It's hard not to make a mistake, believe me. 
Uh, what else did I do? I've got a rear hub. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. That's off a, a Suzuki 500. I think it's a bit big and heavy, but well, I paid 50 bucks, not the end of the world. I made some shock mounts. These go, see, see what it is? It's a tube. I haven't finished the size because I don't know what kind of shocks I'm putting on it. And that's where that goes like that. That gets, that gets welded like that. So that's coming together. So our, our project today is to make a rear brake lever here and a shifter for the other side. So I've got all the pieces on the bench here. I've got some stainless steel. Those are going to be the washers. Got some cold roll. That's the pivot. Got some bronze. This is what the shift lever is going to look like. We'll, we'll, we'll cut that out of one quarter inch. 6061, I think, because I'm not sure. We got some little rod ends, heim joints. These are made out of aluminum, so they're nice and light. And then there'll be a rod that goes in between them. Have to make the, the rod the right length. So let's get started. We're gonna, I'm gonna trace this out. I'll use a, a quarter inch drill and then we'll put that on the mill, bore a hole here for the bushing and we're on our way. Welcome to my shop. Once again, I have no drawing. I just have a piece of cardboard. It's called, it's called cardboard assisted design apparently, CAD. So it's the same shift lever I made on the, on the 2001 race bike. So. I'm making a replica of the bike that got stolen. Okay, I punched it. I'm going to take a pair of dividers and make a nice arc. And then I know the arc is true to the punch dot. Can you see how this is, is different than over here? I did this when I was 19 years old. That's a piece of, of carbide that I silver soldered onto this. I ground the end off. And people said, oh, you're wasting your time. It's going to break. It'll never last. Well, here I am all these years later and it's still working. So if you're careful with stuff, it really can last a long time. There we go. That's my, that's my arc. So I can see that when I, when I do my belt sanding. a 7 8 drill and then I'll use the boring bar and take a small cut out because the pivot is three quarters so that means that the wall thickness is going to be a little bit more than a sixteenth. So I'm going to drill a bunch of holes here and then I'm going to knock this piece out with a hammer. I've got my, my two pound hammer. Here we go. That came out pretty good. Just have to pry it a little bit. There we go. Okay, back to the mill and we're gonna make that fairly smooth with an end mill, then I can do filing later. All right. I left a little bit between the line. I want to make it a little, a little bit beefier, but we'll do some filing. Okay. 
Off to the bandsaw now, we'll cut the shape out. This is my quarter inch rod with a piece of fuel line on it, emery cloth. That's the easiest way to make a radius smooth. There we go. I'm going to leave the rest for now. That's that's the basic shape. So we'll go work on the lathe for a while. We're going to make up some spaces, some washers, things like that. So the first thing I think we'll do is the pivots. We've got to drill eight millimeter hole, face off the ends to the right length, seven eighths. So let's, let's go to the lathe. <laughs> Okay, there's a couple pieces of the puzzle. Now we gotta make the washers that go on either side. Those are stainless steel. I've got a plate. So we need to go to the bandsaw and cut out and I'll show you. This is 304 stainless and what I've done is I've drilled some eight millimeter holes because those are the bolts that are gonna, are gonna go in there. So now we'll go to the bandsaw and we'll rough this out. Then I'll mount it on the lathe on a little arbor. I'll put all four of them and then I'll machine the OD down to one inch. That's a nice way to make a washer. You can start with inch and pot it off, but you never get perfectly eighth of an inch like a plate, so. I prefer to, to do it this way. Ooh, that might do it. This one is a little smaller. So I've got, uh, I'll call this an arbor. It's got an eight millimeter Allen screw. And I'm gonna put the washers on here and then we'll do a little machining and we'll get them all exactly the same size. I have to do this a few times to champ for, I can only do one at a time. I've found that making a race bike is a lot of work. There's a lot of little pieces that have to be made, modified, whatever. But I like building race bikes. It's very, very satisfying. When mine got stolen in 2005 in Brookings, Oregon, on the way back from a race in California, that was a real heartbreak. They got the whole van, they, they got everything. We came home on a bus. All I had was my camera and my toilet kit. 
It was outside a hotel. It's quite a feeling to walk outside the hotel in the morning and see an empty space where your van was. Not a good feeling. There we go, four, four washes. I'll be fine. Let's go look at the bike and we'll see what we're, how we're gonna make the bushing. So what's going on here is there's gonna be the rod ends, one rod end, this is the shifter shaft on the motor. And so the rod end is gonna go like that. And then this is gonna be on the inside because these two have to be in line with each other. It dictates what the bushing looks like. So this is a, a mock-up of the shifter. Okay, so this is gonna have to be at, at the very end, like that, very close. There'll be a little shoulder that goes on the bushing, goes against here. Okay, we figured that out. Let's make a bushing and put it on. Okay, this so is a thou to come off. So I think what I'm gonna do, sand it. Can you see all the spirals in there? That's because the tool is flexing a bit. So you have to be careful at this stage not to, not to overdo it. So. There we go. So we've got a little bit of play. I can feel a little bit of play, but it's got to get pressed in. So that should be good. Okay, we're going to go face off the end and install it. See what happens. So I found these pieces because I'm going to put it in the arbor press now. Let's see what kind of a fit we got here. So this should go in relatively easy. Oh, that's a nice fit. Not too much pressure. Okay, let's see if the if the pivot still fits now that I've pressed it in. I might have to hone it. Oh, look at that, fits. No slop. Let's go drill some holes. Okay, let's go see how things fit. HD goes on the bottom. There we go. So that's what it's going to look like basically. So I need to measure 
in between here and here. And then I'll know how much that little piece in between is gonna be. And we'll, we'll just whip that off on the lathe. How long can that possibly take? So you want this to be down and this to be down that's so that they're at a right angle. So, so from the center to the center is basically about 180. Yeah, it's about 180. Okay, so now I can figure out how much, to, how long to make that middle piece. So, make it to this. That's going to be one, 115. That's how long this is going to be. So I can, I'm going to use this. This is an old, old paint mask. So we're going to use that much of it. So we'll go to the lathe and machine. This is a, a live center. You see how it turns? There's a ball bearing in there. Oh, I'm taking off 45 thou. Okay. We can do that in one cut. That's about 115. And then I want to put a, a relief on the inside. So we'll go in about that much. And then we'll do this side as well. I'll take one, I'll take one more cut. One more small cut. That's a pretty good drill bit, isn't it? Just keep going and going and going. snap of the wrist. Did you catch that? Okay, we have to cut that off now and then we'll just make a hole and tap the other end. Got the grade eight nuts. Oh, look at that. Little snug, but going on. I have to work on this. This is, this is not the right thread. I'll make some kind of an insert to go in here and that's what I did last time. I did something custom. There we go. That's how it works. And this, this hits that just a little bit. So I might have to put a washer in between the shifter and the, and the rod end. It just touch, it just touches lightly. Cause I think it needs to go down just a little bit more cause you have to have the angle. Oh, let, let me put on the foot peg. Let me do that. That's more or less what it looks like. So you want the angle down there because that's, that's the angle that your foot sits at when you're on the bike. Cool. We'll work on the brake lever now, which is altogether all different. It's gonna be made out of steel. It's gonna get welded. It's got a knurled part. Let's go have a look. So got a piece of tubing here. This is out of a, a fork damper, but it's nice tubing. It's a nice wall thickness and I've used this before. And so that's going to get welded on like that. And that probably has to come out at a little bit of an angle. So, and I need to sink these in a little bit, but I can do that. So it's going to be an angle of maybe 
I'm thinking maybe five, five degrees, something like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut this, we're gonna face it to the right length, gonna weld this on, and then I checked on the lathe, I can, uh, I can hold that in the three jaw chuck and bore that out. That's gonna fit the bushing. So, got a few things to do. The pivot is 888. So we'll set this to 888 and then we'll make it a little bit smaller. That's the plan. So we have at least 60 thou to come off. Okay, this goes in the mill now. We have to miter for this tube here. This is an inch tube. We're gonna miter at five degrees, just to give it a little, a little bit of kick out. Yeah, that's gonna work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recess these into the plate halfway. That'll give me more room there. And we'll just put that halfway. That'll be fine. Let's do some TIG welding. In some other videos where I was doing some TIG welding and I didn't have gloves on, I got a bit of flack, maybe a bit more than a bit of flack. I was labeled as a bareback TIG welder and other things, so. Look what I got, Miller time. These are great. I'm never gonna burn myself with these guys. Oh, not bad, sort of in the middle. Okay, so we have a weld. And now I cut this to length, put that back in the lathe, I bore that out because it's got to take a bushing. Let's go do that kind of stuff. I have a knurled piece and if you need to know how to knurl, it's on the foot peg video. We did a knurl there. So that's going to go like, like that. So we just have to hold this in the three jaw chuck now, it fits, and then we bore this out a thou smaller than, than this. That's the plan. So we'll go take this off of the arbor now. That was Mitch's idea to make an arbor, very good. Gotcha. See what kind of a press fit we got. So I go that way. So I'll just press it in. Then when I hold this back in the chuck, I'll just machine off the excess. Oh yeah, that, there's a press fit. That went in nice. So now we bore it out to fit the, I guess the pivot. 
seven seven forty nine. That was that's what the last one was. There we go. A little bit of slot, but that's fine. It's a brake lever. We're gonna gonna miter this. Let's go do that. Okay. So I'm opening up the miter so that this fits. With my big file, my big round file. Pretty darn well. I'll take that as a fit. Okay, that's a full circle now. I need to make something that's going to hold the brake cable on. So I have a piece of cardboard. That's that's my template. So it's going to come out of there. This is quarter inch wide. The cable fits over six millimeters. So I'm going to take off a little bit here. Very technical here. Okay, so we're gonna drill a quarter inch hole right there. Okay, so I can I can countersink those in a little bit, but that's fine because you get the idea now of what's going on. I think that guy goes about like that. And the cable gets held. I think I'm gonna put a cable stop up here. So Maybe this just leans a little bit in, just just a little bit. It won't. This this won't be straight up and down. It's going to lean in just a little bit. So, and I like how the when there's a bolt goes through there, it misses this bolt there. There we go. Okay, so we just have to weld that on, and we're good. Last step. All right, one brake lever. There we go. It all fits, that looks good. Got to make a little mount there for the brake cable. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked our, our video on the Aramaki shifter and brake lever. And Mitch and I like coffee still. So if you buy us a coffee, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. See you next week. Stay safe. If I was going to use this bike a lot, I'd make this out of 4140. Oh.
That's a bit of air pressure. 